Good evening, friends. Meeting again in the session of Stuart Close Philosophy, and we were discussing since many lectures the chapter that is the examination of the patient. And while discussing this chapter, Stuart Close tried to explain many aspects about it, giving all the details what Hanneman have explained in the sixth edition of Organ of Medicine with his own philosophy, he tried to elaborate the concepts of animal. So right from aphorism number 83 to 105, it is a good commentary and philosophy related with those aphorisms as explained by him over here. And he has mentioned many hints. He, he explains over there which are the symptoms which are essential from homeopathic point of view on whom you have to specifically focus all those factors are most essential. At the same time, how every everything is important from homeopathic point of view. And then he explains that hard work is very, very important when you deal with the patient. In, in order to get a good case, a chronic case, Hanneman have explained four qualities in the aphorism number 80, 83 for the homeopathic physician. The first, freedom from prejudice. The second one, sound senses. The third one, that is the attention in observing. And fourth one, that is fidelity in tracing the picture of disease. Out of which he has elaborated very nicely regarding the prejudice, freedom from prejudice. And he says, who is not prejudiced? It is rather a most difficult task of the human being to become unprejudiced. And this never happens because human is gifted with the intellect, understanding, logical mind, the emotions, will, and memory. And because of which, the analysis starts immediately, the comparison starts immediately. And that's why it becomes rather difficult task to become an unprejudiced. Still, you have to achieve that. It takes a long time to become an unprejudiced. But once you become unprejudiced, your success rate always increases. And to become unprejudiced, what is important is to make a very hard study to develop that quality. Look towards each and every patient as a new patient. Never take into consideration what the diagnosis might be. Just look towards what is a phenomenon or manifestations and understand them properly. Try to collect the characteristic totality. Try to collect the every aspect of that human being with which you can find it out the individuality, match that, match his individuality with the portrait which is there in your maternal medica regarding the medicine. And that is the big thing which you have to do instead of labeling the disease with certain names. So many things he has explained while explaining and he explains over there that if you want to really want to achieve success in your practice, go for hard work, find it out, the, all the details of the patient, your attitude should be proper one, looking towards the uh, deceased human being. And then if you develop that technique, then it becomes rather simple. The, we were on page number 176, the last paragraph we have to start with. And here again, he explains certain hints in the case taking. Artifice must sometimes be resorted to in the examination of the case in order to get all the at the facts. Many obstacles have to be overcome. Among them is modesty, often on the part of patient, sometimes rarely nowadays, on the part of physician, if he is young and inexperienced. I often recall the, the with amusement my feelings as I witnessed for the first time an examination of the case of thesis pulmonitis by my old preceptor, Dr. Wells. The part of examination which excited my risibilities was that which referred to the character of sputum. He inquired particularly as to its color, odor, and form and taste. It was the first time I had ever heard such questions and the first time that it had ever been brought home to me that such facts could have any bearing upon the selection of remedy. I believed that I was not over modest, but such refinement of analysis rather disgusted me. After the patient had prescribed for and, dis and dismissed, I frankly stated my difficulty to the old master. He laughed 
a little sympathetically at my ignorance and rallied, rallied me on my squeamishness. Then he soberly print, pointed out that the patient's reply that sputum tested Swedish has enabled him to differentiate between two similar remedies and make an accurate choice. He made that the text for some sadly needed instructions in the necessity of close analysis of all the elements of the case, instructions which no one ever gave me during my college, co college course. Artifice means tricks. It is it, certain things, tricks, which are needed whenever you are dealing with the case. When you talk to the patient, you never get all the details from the patient voluntarily. For that purpose, you, you require a very specific things. In this example, which is he has mentioned, is very correct. If the patient comes with a lot of expectation, but he, he never gives you the quality of expectation, you can't reach to the remedy. But if the patient says, doctor, I'm having tremendous expectation, but it is very difficult to throw it away because it sticks to my mouth. And whenever I try to, I have to put it out, but there is a thread which develops over there. And it when I throw it out, it again sticks to the basin. It never comes up. It, it is so sticky. It is so sticky. Yes, now you can get the remedy. Expectoration profuse, you cannot get. There are many remedies, expectoration profuse. But what quality is there in this expectoration? The expectation is stringy, tenacious, difficult to raise, difficult to throw away. It is ropey. Then you get, yes, it might be a calibacromicum. You can think about it. So such a quality of the specific thing, one must understand. These are things which are necessary. This gives you exactly the remedy. Otherwise, you can't. And that's why in order to go into the details of the case, it is necessary. If the patient is talking vaguely, it is your duty to ask him regarding all those things. So if there is a diarrhea, you have to ask regarding the qualities of diarrhea. What, what qualities of stools are there? Because that those are very clearly defined in our materia medica as well as in the repertory. If we open the chapter of stool, you will get a variety of it, the expressions. And that's what you have to catch. And this is what he, he tries to explain over there. Because of modesty, many people never explain that about it. But it is now changing. People are free now to talk about all those things. But still, when we practice in India, many things, many times, the people, people, they feel little bit timid or even bashful to tell regarding all those experiences, regarding the complaints of urination, regarding the complaints of defecation, regarding the complaints of, in case of females, regarding the menses, ligoria, all those things, or their sexual function. And then it is necessary when, when things are related with that, it is your duty to ask the details about it. And this is what he is explaining. Such types of questions are necessary if you feel they are really necessary. The pain, but before asking those questions, you should be very confident about it. And you, you yourself should not feel a bashful. You should be very clear regard, while asking that. Once you ask it, clearly with confidence the patient will narrate it very easy and this happens many times in my practice i have seen that i i used to ask directly freely whenever i'm dealing with sterility cases i used to ask regarding the sexual function and openly when i talk to towards them regarding it then immediately they reflex and they they, they tells you doctor actually i want to discuss that but i i, I was not knowing how to start this, hap this happens many times and these are things which are essential to reach to the right remedy. Then what he says, here is an important part of the homeopathic examination. Attention should again be direct directed to the use and importance of logical analysis in the symptomatic examination of the patient. 
the clinician analyzes symptoms for the same reason or by the same method that pathologist analyzes the pathological specific. What is analysis? Analysis is categorizing. Analysis is important. What type of symptoms we are getting? Whether it is general symptom, whether it is a particular symptom, whether it is a particular characteristic or whether it is a particular common. In, if it is general, then whether it is mental general, whether it is again will, related with will and emotions or intellectual understanding or memory. Everything which you have to look for. Because once you start analyzing, then you come to the conclusion, yes, the importance of symptoms. And that's why what, what quality of symptom you are getting, it matters a lot. If you get symptoms which are related with will of the patient, they are very important. If will is hampered, everything is hampered. And that's why if any symptom related with the will is there, Kent says you must take it as a topmost symptom in your case. Many of the statements of the patient will be mere generalities. There are, these are of no value to the prescriber until they have been analyzed into their elements. So patient comes to us, doctor, I am having fever, finished. You cannot get a remedy. I am having headache. Vague symptom, general symptom, doesn't have meaning. But if the patient comes and tells the doctor, I am having very severe headache and whenever it happens, it starts over here and then goes up and then goes back. And whenever it is there, I am having absolute constipation. Stools are very hard. Every time, every 15 days, I used to get that. And there is an indigestion. Patient gives you very clearly all those things. The headache starts on the front side, then goes top, then goes back, with associated with very obstinate constipation. The remedies? Remedy is lack defloratum. It is very specific, like deplorator. So you have to, you unless you get such types of symptoms, you cannot come to the conclusion. With vague symptoms, you cannot reach to anything. And patient has the habit of giving you vague symptoms. As stated, they are merely common symptoms without injury. The patient will tell you, for example, that he has a headache, that and all other generality must be analyzed. So that elements of locality, sensation, and modality are brought out by properly framed question. The patient may state that he has a discharge of some kind. After locating that anatomically, it should be analyzed into its elements, color, the odor, the consistency, and the quality as bland or excoriating, causing, itching, etc. So, if patient has nasal discharge, you must know what type of discharge it is, whether it is watery, whether it is stringy, whether it is corrody, whether it is mild, everything. Similarly, with diarrhea, so far as the character of discharges are concerned, but here the act of discharge itself should be analyzed into its elements and its character and concomitants in time and space. Uh, in the time and space fixed by creating a divisions of before stool, during stool, after stool, etc. So, modalities also play a very important role. Either you get location proper, either you get sensation proper, modalities proper. If you get all of them properly, then you will get a very characteristic symptom. In other words, the patient is asked to describe how he feels and what happens before, during and after the act of defecation. So in intermittent fever, for another example, the disease form is analyzed into its element. Number one, type and periodicity. Quotidian, tertian, quarter, weekly, monthly, semi-monthly, annual or semi-annual. And further, as to the time of the day when the paroxysm appears. Stages, prodrome, chill, heat, perspiration. See, every detail is important from homeopathic point of view. The third, apyrexia. In each of these divisions, the phenomena are located as they appear, defining each particular symptom as accurately as possible. 
So this, this is very important. When you deal with the cases, you have to ask all those details. If you get it, then you will get very correct remedy. Thus, to discover and bring out the facts of the case and give them form and individuality as a whole is the art of accomplishing homeopathic examining. So this is what is needed from a homeopathic point of view and the person who is able to catch all those things from the patient will be able to reach to the right remedy. It is an illustration of what a former article meaning means in speaking of the totality as consisting of related fact having form, coherency and individuality and characterizing its formation as an artistic. And this is, this is what a homeopath needs. In the examination of patient, the homeopath must look towards each and every point. He must find it out what is wrong with the patient. He must find it out how patient is expressing. He must find it out the exact location, the exact sensations, exact modalities, exact concomitants, and even the individualities of that individual. There might be something characteristic in the personal history of the patient. There might be anything characteristic related with the, his mind. All those details, if you get, you can reach to the right remedy. And this is an art. This art one has to develop. First important art is to get communicated with the patient. You have to develop an art of communicating. You should be very easily com communicate with any any type of patient, whether he is elder, whether it is your, of your age, he is smaller, you should be able to get communicated. Once you get it, then it becomes simple task. And this is what he is explaining over there, rel related with it. And this is an art. Although the facts must be gathered from the patient, their form, relations, val and value depends almost altogether upon the examiner. The patient, unaided, will usually give only rough, disconnected statements, crude generality, single concrete facts and few details, a mere formless bus. A trained examiner, paint patiently and skillfully, analyzes and completes the statements, brings out details and connects the whole and the constructs the case logically and scientifically giving it a typical form according to a preconceived idea. This is art and true art is always scientific. So he gives again the same thing that patient has a habit of telling you the vague symptoms. This is quite common. Patient comes to you, they talks to you, yes doctor I am having pain in chest, finished. Then you don't get anything which will going to guide you towards certain remedy. It is not a painkiller uh, aspect of allopathy. Here you have to find it out what type of pain, where exactly it is, what type, whether it is related with the um, cardiac origin, whether they are related with the respiratory origin, whether they are related with the ribs or intercostal problem, whether it is related with some acid peptic trouble problem or whether it is related if it is female with related with breast. If you have to take into consideration all those things, then you have to look towards that whether it is localized or it radiates somewhere. Then you have to look for sensation, what type of pain it is. Then you have to look for is there any modality. All those things together gives you a individuality. Otherwise, you can't reach to the remedy. If you open chapter chest from the um, Kent's repertory and open the pain, you have in many remedies, ample remedies, which you nothing can be gained from that. And if you get all those characteristics very specifically, then it your work becomes simple. But this for this, you have to have an artistic aptitude. You develop your art of communicating or talking with the patient, finding it out all the details which are necessary in order to reach to the pres prescription. And all those things, without that, it is not possible to get the results. And this 
art is nothing but the scientific art. As models of analysis in special diseases and for daily practical, procure and study Allen on intermittent fever, Bell on diarrhea, Kimball on gonorrhea, in general analysis and synthesis of the entire field of Madramadiga, Boningusen's therapeutic pocket book and Kent's repertory are classics, indispensable to every human. If you want to develop this art, then what he says, you must go through the Allen's intermittent fever. How nicely every point he has explained over there related with you. Bell's diarrhea, if you see big book, Bell's diarrhea, very clear cut. It is a rep, rep, regional repertory related with only with the diarrhea. And if you see the detailing about it, then you will find how much it is important it is. Same is true with the Kimball's gonorrhea. Then two more books, two more repertories he mentions. And one should be very much familiar with both the books. The first one, it is the Kent's repertory. Yes, Kent's repertory is fake. Famous with everyone because Kent's repertory is generally taught everywhere. But Boningusen's therapeutic pocket book is again a quick bedside prescriber repertory. But no one uses that because it has been not taught properly. If time permits, whenever time is there, I will going to tell teach you regarding Boningusen's therapeutic pocket book. That will guide you exactly how to go and very easily at the bedside with the help of Boningusen's TPB. So these are big books. If you get a habit of reading the rubrics from both the books, then you will have, uh, then you will develop what is important from your point of view on the when you are taking or dealing with the patient. If you know the things which are given in repertory, then you automatically look for it in patient. And this is the method. If you know there is a symptom or rubric like a frowning, and then you look, yes, look for frowning. Without that, if you don't know, you will not going to look. And that's why the study of Boningusen's therapeutic pocket book and Kent's repertory is very important. Boningusen's therapeutic pocket book and his book on fever, unfortunately out of print, are the original un and unsuperseded models upon which all other reliable works of, his, of this class are based. Boningusen's Following and working with Hanuman is the fountainhead of analysis and classification of symptoms from which we were, we all draw his name. Next to that of Hanuman is the most illustrious in the galaxy of homeopathic heroes. Methods of practice based upon and patterned after the work of such masters cannot fail in to bring success to every practitioner who uses them and advance the cause of homeopathy. So he explains the importance of Boningusen and Boningusen's therapeutic pocket book. Boningusen was a very specific good student who was who, who used to practice along with Hanuman, who learned many aspects from Hanuman directly. And he was heavy, he has developed his own analytical mind. There is there is a book called as Boningusen's Lesser Writings. My suggestion to all of you go through that book. It is a wonderful book on no many. Aspects you will understand from the Boningusen's writings, which are given in Boningusen's lesser writing. Same is true with the Kent. If you read the Kent's repertory, Matra Medica and philosophy, but must read Kent's lesser writings, which are wonderful things which he has mentioned in lesser writing. So these are things which guides us in the future related with the homeopathy. So here completes the one part of the um, this chapter. Now he goes to the clinical history that we'll learn uh, in tomorrow's session. We'll stop over here and conclude today's session. Uh, today evening, I'm going to share again a small remedy from third year's BHMS course, Cannabis Indica. Not um, commonly utilized remedy, but one must know the aspects of cannabis indica, the drug remedies. So today at 8 o'clock, we'll meet and learn the cannabis indica. If there is any query question, we can have a chat. Otherwise, we'll conclude. So thank you. Thanks being there. 
meet at 8 o'clock with the cannabis indica from Allen's Kings. Good evening.